Okay, one more time I want to show you an, a chess ending played by uh, Capablanca. In this game Capablanca was only 12 years old. He was playing already a match against the Cuban champion in, in those times. This was, game was played in 1901 um, and the, the, the Cuban champion was uh, Juan Corso and Capablanca at his age of 12 defeated Corso and this is one of the, of the most beautiful games, is game number 9. In this position, position we see that this ending is actually looks quite equal. Uh, the pawn structure of white is not so nice, but he has a bishop against a knight. Capablanca playing white saw that uh, the plan of black would be to advance his g-pawn to push uh, the, the white king backward in, and gain uh, space, so Capablanca played h4 here to control the square g5. Um, Corso answered with g6, of course not with h6 because then h5 is played. So he played g6 and after g4 he went on with h6, now preparing g5 but it's too late because Capablanca plays g5 himself. After taking, taking check, the black king must go to e7. And the plan uh, of uh, Capablanca is to create an outside pass pawn on the king side. Um, we continue to see how he manages to do this. He plays g4. This is the first step. After taking comes a surprisingly beautiful move that is it's not taking on g4 immediately but playing a bishop to d3 first. Attacking the pawn on g6 and black answers knight to f5. Now uh, white takes on g4 and the knight, black knight can take on d4. And the g6 pawn falls now. Now that we see that Capablanca already has achieved his main, his, his, his first uh, goal, and that is creating this outside pass pawn. So the game continued with c5, king h5. Knight e6, king h6, we see the, the white king is trying to, to support the passed pawn. King to f8, bishop f5, and here black has two choices. He can go to g7 like he did in the game with the knight, but he could also try to uh, aggressively go to d4 to attack the, the bishop and also try to attack this uh, c2 uh, pawn. But in this next variation that I will show you that is very beautiful, we see what could happen if the knight goes to d4. Um, the bishop goes to d7 and if he takes on c2 the knight, then comes g6. Now he is threatening to move the king to h7 and then go, uh, walking on with the, with the, with the pawn, the g-pawn, so black must go with the king to g8 and then follows bishop e6 check king to h8 and then g7 checkmate. Well, that's a very beautiful variation. Huh? Uh, well, black didn't go to d4 with the knight, he went to g7 with the knight. And we continue with bishop to c8, b6 to save the pawn, g6, d4, and now of course black, what, what black wants to do is to play c4 and then d3 to have his own pass pawn on this side. Uh, so Capablanca played b3 controlling the c4 square. Then king to g8, a4 controlling the b5 square. So this way white controls all these three squares that are important to not to give uh, black any uh, possibility. Black went to f8, bishop g4, the knight goes to e8. At this point, uh, black cannot do much than waiting. Um, white plays the king to h7, and black goes back and forth with his uh, knight. King h6, knight e8. Well, this uh, repeating of the moves I is because uh, this uh, move, this this part of the game was around move 40, and they wanted to uh, to, to get to the time control. So that's why they repeated uh, this move. Then the time control is done and then the game continues. Bishop to e2, knight to g7, bishop c4, controlling this beautiful diagonal, controlling these two squares also that are important. 
the knight goes to e8 and then the king starts moving to the other side of the board king e7 king f5 knight g7 check king e5 and now we see that if white would try to prevent the white, the white king from go moving towards the, uh, the a7 pawn by for example playing king d7 then the king changes his mind and goes to f6 and after knight e8 check king f7 knight d6 king f8 the g pawn will advance so that means that in this position a uh, black cannot give away the, f the field f uh, the control over f6 so black played here a knight to h5. The game continued with bishop e2 attacking the knight and the knight must go back. Then king to d5. And now here again, if black would play king to d7, then comes bishop to g4 check. And oh, I'll, I'll remove these <laughs> arrows right now, because that was part of my preparation of this video. Uh, black has a difficult decision to make. If he goes to one side of the board, to do to, to this towards this pawn, then the black king will capture the, the pawns on this side. And if the black king goes to uh, c7 to prevent that, then the white king will enter to the, to the other side. So this is a very, would be a very difficult decision for black. That means that in this position uh, it's not a good idea for black to move the, the king to d7. That's why he decided to go to e8 with the knight. Then the white king enters here. Knight g7 and the, knight, and the king goes to b7. And now it's it's uh, he cannot black cannot prevent anymore that the a7 pawn will fall. But black has an idea. He wants to try with king d6, take f7, king c7. He wants to try to uh, trap the white king on that in that corner. The king goes to a6 and a, a black starts waiting with this n moving his knight back and forward. Uh, bishop goes to f3, knight g7, bishop d5, knight e8, bishop f7. Now the bishop is controlling the e8 square, so after knight g7, the, b the black knight will not have the, the square e8 anymore. The king goes to b5. Now the knight must go to another square, f5, and then comes a5. Um, after this, he gave a check here, and the king went again to a6. And now we see this is almost the last move of the game, because after b takes a5, Capablanca advanced his, uh, his g pawn to g7, and Corso had to resign. If I go back one move in this position, uh, if black uh, would try to prevent the move g7, he would have to go to f5 with the knight. But in that, in that case, white simply takes on b6, a takes b6, check, king b8, king b5, and the, f the next pawn will fall and the whole uh, position of black will uh, collapse. So, this was the ending that I wanted to show you. Capablanca aged only 12 years old and already playing the end game so beautifully as in this game against the Cuban former champion Juan Corso.